In this video, we're going to look at how cell diagrams can provide a compact representation of what's going on in an electrochemical cell. So starting off with our reaction that we've been using as an example throughout this series, we have tin reacting with aqueous nickel ions, forming aqueous tin ions, and nickel solid. Okay, so let's write the two half cells of these reactions. We have on the left, I'm going to write our oxidation of tin. So we have tin solid going to aqueous tin plus two electrons. In terms of the net ionic, uh, in terms of the net ionic equation, anyway. And on the other side, I'm going to write our reduction which is aqueous nickel ions plus two electrons going to nickel solid, both of these being reversible reactions. Okay, and then filling in kind of some other details, which would be there if we had drawn out the entire cell, we know that from our, <clears throat> our oxidation to our reduction here, we have our electrons flowing from the left to the right, so that's our electron flow. And then in the middle here, we would have the salt bridge. Which would help to electrically balance this reaction. Where if we had, for example, KCl, um, we could balance out the positive charge over here by moving chloride ions. And we could balance out the positive charge over here, or, and balance out the negative charge over here by moving in potassium ions. Okay, so the way I've drawn this here, as we see, we have our oxidation on the left. <clears throat> we have our reduction on the right. And in the middle, we have the salt bridge. Okay, so this is the basis of how we can perform um, a, how we can draw a cell diagram, which is a compact representation of every all of these half cells and salt bridges which are occurring in this electrochemical cell. So if I wanted to draw the cell diagram for this <coughs> uh, electrochemical cell with tin and nickel, I would do, write tin solid, and then there's a single bar representing the reaction between the tin solid and its uh, aqueous counterpart. And then I would include also the counter ion which was in uh, an aqueous solution with it. So <clears throat> for example, we could have tin with a sulfate in its aqueous solution. Okay, so that's our oxidation and that's at the anode at the left. And our oxidation and our anode are always going to be at the left in our cell diagrams. And our reduction and our cathode are going to be at the right. So we're going to have nickel sulfate, again, including that counter ion in solution there. Then a single bar, and on the outside we have our cathode there. And then in the middle, what we, how we represent our salt bridge is just by a double bar. There's nothing else there. So this result here, this final result, is our complete cell diagram <clears throat> for this electrochemical cell of tin and tin sulfate at our at our anode and nickel and nickel sulfate, or nickel sulfate and nickel at our cathode. So the only other thing that we need to keep in mind. Um, with cell diagrams is the case where we have an inert metal which is also an electrode instead of uh, something which is a direct participant in one of these half cell reactions. So we can show that for example by including the re by doing some in, uh, reaction where we have the standard hydrogen electrode uh, playing a part. So let's go ahead and do that over here. Let's write uh, let's have a have an electrochemical cell where we have zinc and then 
plus, so our zinc is going to be oxidized, so whatever's here is going to be reduced, so that's going to be H plus ions. Then we're going to go on the right, we're going to have zinc 2 plus aqueous plus H2 gas. So in these half cells, zinc is going to produce two electrons. And if this is one half H2, that's going to produce one electron. So we're going to go ahead and double this one here going from one half and H up to two and H2. That way each half cell produces the appropriate number of electrons as we as we complete it and then we have a proper stoichiometric balance of all species in the equation there. Okay, so how do we write the halves how do we write the cell diagram for this uh, reaction here? <clears throat> well, let's think about it. So we have our oxidation, which is zinc getting oxidized to zinc uh, ions. And let's say that's zinc sulfate as well, may as well. Okay, so our oxidation is on the left. The zinc is the electrode. Then we have a single bar separating that and zinc sulfate in aqueous solution. There will be some double bar for our salt bridge. And then our reduction is going to be hydrogen, so we're going to have HCl, which is aqueous. Single bar between that and what is the product of that reduction, which is H2 gas. And then if we don't have the electrode present by the end of this, then we go on the right and we just include whatever that electrode was. And let's just say there was a solid platinum wire. So if we have a, an inert electrode would go on the outside of this reaction if we had that situation come up. So we've got an inert electrode there. And if we reversed this reaction such that we had the reverse, we can show you what happens when our inert electrode is the anode, then we would have it on the outside as well. So our inert electrode is always going to be on the outside here. So I have H2 gas getting oxidized to HCl, aqueous HCl, going through the salt bridge, and then we would have aqueous zinc sulfate getting reduced to zinc metal. So this would be the reverse reaction going from here to here. So that inert electrode, as we see, is always going to be on the outside and is just an extra bar separated from our the rest of our cell diagram wherever that occurs.